hello students welcome to your biology class we have almost come to the end of this chapter before i start the lesson let me tell you in science now you have to make three copies and physics chemistry biology and biology the worksheets which i have given that you have to do in that copy let us start today's lesson some organisms live together and share shelter and nutrients this is called symbiotic relationship so they live together some of the organisms live together and they share shelter and nutrients and this is called symbiotic relationship for example certain fungi live in the roots of trees the tree provides nutrients to the fungus in return receives help from it to take up water and nutrients from the soil this association is very important for the tree so the roots of the trees leave some fungus fungus non green they are unable to make the food whereas trees are able to make the food so fungus get the food from the trees and in return it helps the plant or the tree to take up water and nutrients from the soil and this type of relationship is called symbiotic relationship both are mutually benefited they live together and both are mutually benefited other example of symbiotic relationship in organisms called lichens a chlorophyll containing partner which is an alga and a fungus live together so in this lichens there are two organism living together one contains chlorophyll this is called an alga and which the other one which does not have the chlorophyll this part this is a non green this are called fungus they live together the fungus provides shelter water and minerals to the alga and in return the alga provides food which it prepares by photosynthesis so fungus provides shelter water and minerals to the alga in return alga provides food alga as it is green in color so it can mix the food by the by the process of photosynthesis so it gives it to the fungus in return from the fungus it gets shelter water and minerals so this is also an example of symbiotic relationship see i have drawn a diagram just to show you uh, the lichens how it works uh, at times on the crevices of the rocks or maybe on the bark of the tree even on the soil also we see that is maybe it is uh, greenish or yellowish which is spreading around as if right and if you see it has got two parts i have mark, uh, colored this with green this part that is the colored with green this part that is the algal part and which is i have colored with brown this is the fungal part so alga as it is green in color it can make the food and fungus and fungus gets the food from the algae and algae gets shelter water and minerals from the fungi so they are living in association and both are mutually benefited this is also an example of symbiotic relationship these are lichens now next what we are going to learn how nutrients are replenished in the soil how nutrients are replenished in the soil for making food plants require carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide they get it from the air and water they get from the soil but along with the water they take the nutrients what are the nutrients for example pot nitrogen potassium phosphorus these are the nutrients they take from the soil and they utilize this for various active uh, uh, for their growth and other activities as they take it from the soil so soil the amount of this nutrients in the soil keep on decline <coughs> excuse me now so this which is um, declining or which is reducing uh, now the plant will not be able to grow properly so it has to be replenished or it has to be added again so farmers they use fertilizers and manure to replenish the lost nutrients 
so they sprayed manure or fertilizers fertilizers which are uh, which can be made in the factories whereas manure these are made from the plant and animal wastes say about vegetable pills the kitchen waste what we get vegetable pills scales of fish egg shells even uh, the cow dung so they all this mix together and keep uh, in a pit they keep on depositing this and keep it covered for 10 to 12 days after that it becomes manure and they mix this with the soil so by this the soil gets the gets back the nutrients uh, when the farmers add fertilizers or manure to this these nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil we can grow plants and keep them healthy if we can fulfill the nutrient requirement of plants so if we can fulfill the nutrient requirements of the plants the plants can grow in a better way usually crops require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins you have learned about this so they require nitrogen to make proteins after the harvest the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen you learned that uh, though nitrogen has the uh, gas is available in plenty in the air plants cannot use it in the manner they can use carbon dioxide they need nitrogen in a soluble form so directly from the air they cannot get it take it so they need to they can take it in a soluble form the bacterium called rhizobium bacterium that is a small uh, organism or microorganism and name of the bacterium is rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a soluble form but rhizobium cannot make its own food so it lives in the roots of gram peas moong beans and other legumes and provides them with nitrogen actually legumes that the fruits of these plants which are called legumes and these plants are called leguminous plants these plants are called leguminous plants most of the pulses are obtained from leguminous plants in return the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria so this is also an example of symbiotic relationship thus they Thus, they have a symbiotic relationship. This association is of great importance for the farmers. They do not need to add nitrogen fertilizer to the soil in which leguminous plants are grown. Actually, what they do, the farmers, uh, they grow leguminous plant and when harvesting is done, that is the, um, the grains has been collected. After that, they cut the roots of this plant, uh, cut it into pieces and mix it with the soil so the soil get enriched with nitrogen when so the next uh, crop they are going to grow maybe the cereals so at that time they need not to add the nitrate fertilizer right so i have uh, drawn a diagram to show you this is a plant it is uh, pea plant just uh, the um, fruit has become little bigger but just to show you that is it is a pea plant it is a leguminous plant and the roots here you see the solen portions which are there and this solen portions these are called the root nodules in this root nodules remains the bacterium that is the name of this bacterium rhizobium i have drawn it over here in the circle see these are microorganisms very small organisms now they are able to take the nitrogen from the air they are taking the nitrogen from the air and they release it in the soil the plants use this nitrogen for making their uh, making proteins and in return so they are getting the nitrogen from this bacterium in return the bacteria gets the food from the plant so this is also an example of symbiotic relationship at the same time it helps in enriching the soil with nitrogen farmers need not to add extra uh, add, add nitrate fertilizer if they grow this rhizobium uh, if they grow this leguminous plant in the soil and this is uh, growing different types of crops alternately uh, in the, on the same piece of land that is known as uh, 
crop rotation. So this is also a way of enhancing or increasing the fertility of the soil or enriching uh, replenishing the soil nutrients. So here we have come to the end of this chapter. In the description box I will uh, give a um, worksheet. So please do that. Thank you children.